All right. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to call a regular meeting of the Board of Education for the School District of North Fond du Lac to order. And in the place of our regular clerk, uh, alternate clerk, I would like to uh, start with a roll call vote. You bet. Hold on a second. Maybe. Here. Goldowski. Hawk. Here. Streeter. Here. Will. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Report on public notice, please. Uh, public notices on agendas are mailed to the Final Act Reporter Radio Station KFIZ, KFIZ 107.1 WFDL Radio, and agendas were posted in the District Office, U.S. Bank, and Municipal Building on Friday, January 19th in the year of 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of several meetings were uh, distributed to the board members in the members package. Uh, anybody have any comments, questions, or corrections? Uh, a couple. Um, Aaron, I made it to the third one. Correct. But the first and second one, I'm listed as being present. Okay. So if we could just correct that. So I'm listed as being present and absent. So, so I've got 602 absent, um, and then I have you at the so, so 803 here is I have you uh, absent on the correct ones here what happened was that so they're, they're correct on here uh, that you were absent for the seven and the six o'clock one but present for the eight correct correct and then also um, uh, uh, President Chisholm I believe Steve you did too if you notice that there's that blacked out things so uh, the the board the official minutes have those names redacted and not in it and they also have underneath the guests are all consistent where it says Officer Hendricks and two guests for all of them, the student and one of the parents did come. So those are all reflected, corrected in the board minutes here and that I saw those errors. Any other questions? Corrections. If not, then uh, those, those minutes will stand approved as amended. Uh, Treasurer's report, Mr. Stream. Cash balance on hand December 19, 2017, $304,171.90. Receipts from 1219 through 1.2018, $1,483,963.53. Transfers from investment accounts, $1,400,000. Total receipts, $3,187,335.43. Expenditures 1219.17 through 1.2018. $2,050,207.03. Transfers to investment account, $940,000. Total expenditures, $2,990,207.03. Cash balance on hand, January 22nd, 2018, $197,128.40. Transactions. Bills are recommended for payment are shown on the attached list dated January 22nd, 2018, amount of $1,781,106.65. Bills will be approved at the January board meeting. <clears throat> Pre-approved checks, $993,306.86. Board meeting checks, $787,799.79. Total bills to be approved, $1,781,106.65. Right, thank you. <clears throat> uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, regards to the expenses that were part of the member's package? Seeing none, then um, it's worth the pleasure on bills to be approved for $1,781,106.65. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right. We'll get seconded. Any further questions or discussion? If not, roll we'll call, please. Chisholm? Yes. Golovsky? Hi. Yes. Streeter? Yes. Will? Yes. All right, motion carries. Clerk's report, please. Correspondence or donations? Yes, we have a few. Um, I will pass these out. These are a couple letters. Uh, this is a thank you note from Kim Vander Lyon from uh, FLC and Ada about the bonus at the 
uh, board had approved, and also for Audrey, our, our, our what, 40 plus year employee. Um, and this is the letter that went out to Mr. and Mrs. Krug. They're always very gracious in donating money, probably around $1,000 every year to buy instruments for band of uh, this very gracious and kind people. Um, I had sent this also, this is the final um, thing from the 2017 Christmas, all the elves over at FLC at over 120 families, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and then as far as other donations, uh, besides the Vicky and Butch Krug, which are, they uh, gave $998.99 for some Timbals and a Piccolo. Uh, Sophia Foundation gave $500 for FBLA, that was payment that was um, made to Kurt and for Oriel TV from last year for when they did some recording of a servant leadership conference. Mike and Vicki Jolka, very blessed every year, give $100 for a scholarship fund to thank you has been sent to them. Uh, 50 bucks for Backpack Buddies, another $50 from Sherry Banky. That's that program that's gonna be starting for kids through Oriole Nation that uh, every weekend kids will take home five or six items in a bag that, that qualify and really don't have a lot of food. And that will all be given to kids on the weekends. We're starting kindergarten and gonna move forward from there. Um, and then the service league uh, donated one thousand dollars to the fourth grade team for classroom library. So we have a, quite a fruitful time of right. donations. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we'll dispense with the student council report since Ms. Miramonte is not with us this evening. Which brings me at seven oh six to the citizens' input portion of the meeting. So I'll declare the citizens' input portion of the meeting open at seven oh six. This is an opportunity for any citizens who wish to be heard. Mm -hmm. Since there are none, staff members don't seem to be rushing to make any comments either, um, then uh, I'll declare the citizens' input portion of the meeting closed at 7.07 p.m. Which brings us to item J, superintendent's report. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, first off, Dave McCoo, he's from the north side of Oshkosh, so made a uh, calculated decision with traveling so we can make that up. But he's the one from Shank that does all of our audits. And things are going very well. Um, so, but he'll be able to fill us in more, get us those documents, and within the next few months, he'll come and review that again for us if all things are going. So, there's that personnel update. Um, we're posted for the new student services director. Uh, that will be closing. The 29th of January, I'm looking to assemble the team for that. If anybody would be interested, it's February 7th we're doing interviews. It's a Wednesday. Uh, we're going to look to interview, depending on how many people uh, apply, no more than four at this time. There will be four different parts to the interview process. One is with a group of people that would include if a board member want to be part of it, administrative team, teachers, probably about 10 to 15 people. Mike Gonzalez is going to take that person, or take tours. Um, and then Maria Putzer, uh, business manager, is going to facilitate a writing prompt uh, to see kind of a little bit more of uh, how they would communicate and what they would do is with giving information about special ed and communi communicating with staff. And then the final part is an interview directly with me. I like to do that because then they can feel a little more open when they're talking to the rest of the people. But then with me, we're able to talk salary, I'm able to talk to them on a different level about different things so that we know where things are at. So, um, Four, only having four so far unusual? Or? No, that's how many people we'll interview. We only have three so far right now, but I know it's probably, we have four right now, uh, but I know of some others that are looking to do it. I, You know, there isn't that many pupil services directors out there that period, am I right, Debbie? The ones that are looking to move there, a lot of them already entrenched in a lot of places where they're at, especially two and we have some more better pupil services directors. They might be vested, or maybe they're within a 10 year window, so they might not think it behooves them to move for those, you know, because they're already vested with a post retirement or somewhere they're at. Um, I think we're still going to get the quality. I know that we have three people that have experience already. Um, we have a person that uh, doesn't have any experience but has a lot of talent. Um, and then down at the board convention, I did talk to somebody who I'm very intrigued. And they were saying that they were looking to apply. Debbie is giving the name to some others. So I think a lot of it's going to be, you know, getting things together, getting things up, you know, the T's crossed, the I's dotted. So all we need is one. So that's, that's the key part. So there is, uh, well, Mike, you saw, like, how many people did you say have applied for the district administrator? 
for you guys? Easy. Uh, for the village yeah. administrator? Yeah. Um, over 35. Over 35. Mm -hmm. Oshkosh, they have a, a superintendency open. I think they have over 35 also. So there's some areas where there are some people services is a pretty unique position. We do have some people, so we're not going to replace Debbie ever, but we're going to find somebody who's going to be uh, able to, things are changing up. Today was the first day of our new model. So um, we're, we're looking at how we can do things different. So we're looking all right there. We know that, I know that there's probably two staff members that are looking to retire that haven't formally announced. Hopefully they will in February so we can get those posted. Um, I don't see a lot really going. Dave is working on, we have uh, over at Friendship, we have a, a new, a, not a newer, about a month in. She's doing very well. What's her, what's her name? Jackie Geneiser, almost two months now. Yeah, doing really good. And then Dave's hiring two or three students to help fill some other time. So next year we're going to hire another full-time custodian. I'm sure of it with the new building and I'll think they're going to work. So um, admin team, except for Debbie, is all, from what I understand, is going to be around. So. We're rocking and rolling. We're looking at another stable year and adding some more pieces. So, um, Review State Convention, a uh, good time. We had uh, everybody, I know Mike couldn't make it, but everybody else was able to make it at some time. Uh, learned a lot of things uh, right up to that Daggett. Bill Daggett at the end about what we can do, and I'm pretty excited about that uh, and how we can really make a difference and make some change at the middle of the high school. What he did is he looked at schools that were underperforming they did some things differently, and within five years, they're some of the top performing schools without even increasing budgets. Um, a lot of it has to do with how, uh, what we focus on, and it's more about what they call non-cognitive skills, work ethic, working through trauma, um, being decent, matters. And once you get those relationships going, then you look at relevance and rigor. So it's looking at things differently, but I think it's exactly what we're looking for for middle and high school, and also little for our elementary. So, Looking at there's some cost to some professional development. Uh, it's nothing different. Um, and what it is is just looking at things from a different lens. Uh, so that's something I took away from it. How about you guys? What did you guys get? Yeah, I enjoyed the, uh, the, the keynote speakers. I thought both of them were really excellent. But a couple of the sessions that I uh, attended uh, I thought were very insightful. One of them that both Vicki and I attended was put on by a gentleman from the Omro School District and was talking, it was all about uh, using motion in the classroom. And that some kids just, you know, they're fidgety, right? So they have a lot of energy. And so one of the things that he did, and he showed a picture of fifth grade boys sitting at a table with one of these under, under uh, desk bicycles, and it's quiet and it gives them something to focus on and they're able to, you know, they're able to focus and have attention. And so the other thing that I thought was intriguing was he said the uh, quiet rooms that we have, one of his quiet rooms has a treadmill in it because when a kid needs to diffuse and go to the room, he's, some kids can't process just sitting there and being quiet on the treadmill and walk quietly for 15 minutes. And so um, it, it was really a, I think it, it made sense because you're seeing it in industry, this whole motion, stand up work desks and you know the treadmill and uh, you know we're not meant to sit still in chairs and so uh, it, I thought it was real interesting and, and uh, so Vicki and I might come and talk to you about it. All right. I think that's going to be the student services elementary and we're looking at different furniture but definitely. Yep. I think that's going to be one of the huge advantages of our new design at Friendship where we have the playground right by the cafeteria so easily accessible and safe, so it's going to be fun. And a walking track. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Melissa, did you, anything stick out? Uh, a couple things. So I attended, I didn't get to attend very many, but I did attend one on the school daycare, which was super interesting. And I did get, the, the girl who gave the presentation sent me the student as well as the, or I'm sorry, the, the parent as well as the employee handbooks that they use. So that was interesting to me how they make it work and kind of some of the things that they are able to offer parents in school-based daycare versus a regular daycare. So I apparently can't show you anything because my iPad just died. But um, that was really neat. And then I attended a couple of different booths on um, classroom furniture. So was taking a peek at some of the interactive things and the, the different 
types of furniture that they have available for the kids who need motion and movement <laughs> um, to keep them throughout their day. So I actually ran into somebody who apparently were piloting some furniture here mm -hmm. in the school district. So he had, that's what I was just looking at now, and he emailed me all of the different products that were piloting mm -hmm. through them. And then I got um, an email for a, a different company that has some really neat alternative options as we get into that. There was something else that I'm having in my mind like, now my iPad died, so I'll have to think about it. All right. Well, with me, first of all, the delegate assembly was a record after okay. 23 of them that I've been. And we were done in 55 minutes with the 13 proposals, which it starts at 1.30, some years I've been there to 5, 5.15 even. Um, this was done in 55 minutes. Um, uh, 10 of the 13 passed without any discussion even. Wow. Um, yeah, which is very unusual. There's always somebody that wants to get up and talk. So um, the other three wasn't, were, and part of the reason I think, to be fair, is that a lot of this stuff wasn't very controversial. When I served on that committee, they said the goal, you know, we have some things that everybody can agree with, but let's try to get some things that'll draw out some different viewpoints, and uh, there wasn't much of that. Um, there was a, a long discussion about um, reimbursement for transporting voucher pupils, and most people who talked didn't quite get what the resolution was saying or asking for, and they wanted to get that. Um, that part of it out of there. So it was amended and the amendment passed and, and it went on. But it basically means the same thing, just um, you know, getting more money for, for uh, transporting students. Um, I went to one thing that our good neighbors um, Fond du Lac put on um, about new teacher boot camp. And I, I realized that we, we haven't hired too many brand new teachers right out of college recently because we've had some quality applicants you know, that have experience. but. Just um, some of the things that they work on there, I, and, and we, we do this too, we have that new teacher academy the first day and then they have mentors. Um, I think they, because they're bigger, they probably do a, a lot more, so kids, they're kids, new teachers, some get uh, lost in the shuffle, but, um, and then focusing on millennials, um, and getting them and, and keeping them, because millennials have a whole different view of how the world works than, than what some of us at my age do. Um, uh, just for example, millennials want to be believed in and they want to have the people around them believe, um, the, uh, pe have people around them that they can believe in, like their principals or their other staff members. Um, they, they, really want, they really encourage their mentors to stay close with them and just sit down and just say, how, how's it going today? Do you have, because they're also, uh, millennials want to show that they're good and that the principal made the right decision in, in hiring them. So they may be a little cautious about asking something that could per be perceived as a dumb question or shouldn't you know that already. So, so they do a lot of that. And, and then it, um, they want to build a culture where the new teachers um, can express their ideas about stuff that maybe they learned in school or saw at their student teaching or something that, and that it can learn from them also. So uh, that was uh, that was a fun one. And then uh, two of the first two keynote speakers I thought were among, in all my years, among the best I've ever been to. I, I just really enjoyed both of them. Aaron, you touched a little bit on that, um, Dr. Day. Day. Um, the, the first guy. Robbie. Was, Robbie, the former guitarist for Hanson, <laughs> and how yeah. he expanded his, <laughs> went on from there, and all this all over the world as an ambassador with the State Department and doing different things culturally. He was a guitarist really in Hanson? Yeah, he was a guitarist in Hanson. Yeah, he started. I missed the first part of his presentation. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he showed a few pictures of him in the background with oh the band performing. But, wow. Um, and then, uh, and then unfortunately, Fridays, I don't know if it was Friday, but that was probably one, one of the worst, or at the bottom of, of all the ones I've seen over the years. I, I didn't quite get the connection. I, I got his message, but I didn't quite get the connection of, I think Friday is supposed to be somebody to fire us up and send us home with the excitement to get back to school on Monday or whatever the case may be. But, but that was okay. I learned a little bit about meditation. And <laughs> 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 but so anyway, I, it was another success.
successful one. I think it's a, a great investment in sending the board to that. So. Excellent. That's all that I have. All right. Um, well, cool. Well, we'll look at getting that. Uh, we'll have uh, a new board member next year. Um, see what happens. Mike, you're still more than welcome to come down with us. We'll get everything, I think, set up. Uh, but, um, yeah, I learned a lot, and I really enjoyed the bonding opportunities of talking. Thank you for investing your time and coming down. Um, all right, so future board agenda items. Um, we have a policy meeting that will be coming up at some time, just uh, updating policies, kind of what I've done before. Compensation committee, Maria's going to start heading that up in February, March. Referendum updates, that will keep coming as time goes on. Uh, I'm going to do an um, um, uh, all-mailer to everybody in, all of our, in our entire district, probably at the end of February, beginning of March, with some updated things. A um, new web page will be out, I'm guessing, within the next week or two. So it'll come up there and it has your emails on and we'll start really populating. Karen's done an awesome job. It's from a company called Connecto through at Heartland Business Systems. It's all ADA compliant. There's some links that go to our old site, but it's really, it's quite, it's quite different. That was another booth I stopped at was the social media booth. And yeah. that was really cool, looking at all the different things that you can do social media in your school district. Cool. And, yeah. that. and that is, we are, I mean, if you follow Facebook with, with North Final Life Schools, where Karen puts stuff off all the time, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. So, but our webpage will be proud of that, will be coming out. Um, admin reports, you got those, I said to Sam's too. Uh, nothing really changed there. They'll be starting to look at their goals more and more as time goes on. I got that waiver that's in there, so I sent all the stuff in, the minutes, the rationale, all that. On a Thursday, got it back on a Friday, so we are legal and good to start on August 20th. Um, and then, one other thing, just to kind of keep up, well, the, the bill passed the assembly for a vote or for the number of signatures we need, and that will be going to the Senate hopefully the 23rd of January, and it should be passed. And then we have a resolution, I believe it was 30 votes or 30 signatures that the board decided on. That was in October. So unless that changes, what will happen is, is for the next election cycle, they'll need, uh, somebody wants to run for the Board of Education, School District North Final Link will need 30 votes. So that will be a big deal. And that was, I mean, it took a long time to get there, but Dan Rossmiller kind of called us out and said, it's because of North Final Act, and if you need something done, let us help you. But that took, what, about a year and a half? Mm -hmm. To do it, it's something that simple, so it tells you how, but, but that's how it probably should I'm thinking, you know, pragmatism isn't a bad thing. Um, one thing that you're very conscious of, and I'm gonna ask for your input, and possibly your help, um, there is two bills out there currently right now. One is from Amanda Stuck, who's from the Northern Fox Valley. Very nice uh, person. She is. Um, she was up at the legislative breakfast. There'll be another one coming out probably beginning of February. She has a bill out to get equal aid payments. Mm -hmm. For instance, we get probably, let's say, $8 million. We get a little more than that, but $8 million in state aid. Right now, we get 15% of it in July. And then we get 25% the next quarter, 25% the next quarter, and then 35% in June at the end. So what happens, that's how it goes for all districts. Now you've heard of short-term borrowing, and that's the main reason we have a fund balance. We have it because sometimes, you know, like we have, we go, our, our budget looks in the deficit because we're growing so much, so we have to invest in things, but at the end it works out. So we need those resources in order to invest in things so we can meet our students' needs that we know we'll get from our enrollment. But the main reason a lot of people hold on to fund balance, well, two reasons. One is for building projects and things later on to save, but there's different mechanisms for that now. Um, well, fund 46 along with uh, Trust Fund 73, which we use for post deployment benefits. So there's mechanisms for that. So really the fund balance has been out there for not having a short-term borrow and to make sure that also bond rating, there's also things that can really impact it. So. We're getting closer and closer because our fund balance is staying at about $3.2 million, but we've increased $800,000 in our budget, so that $3.2 million goes from a 22% to a 21%, even though the amount stays the same. Well, the, we're one of maybe very few districts that don't short-term borrow. Some short-term borrowing costs $100. Some districts, I think, budget $80,000. I think Milwaukee and Madison probably budget $100,000 plus if not more. So there's quite a bit of money throughout the 430 some or 20 some odd districts that go into 
interest payments because they have to use fund balance because we don't get that aid payment. Now you could take aid payment equally, but you have to pay a penalty for what the state would have made on that interest. So Manistuck has one that has 25, 25, 25, 25. And then Luther Olson has another one that has 12 equal payments, okay? So those are the two bills, Luther Olson, Republican, Senate, Manistuck, Democrat, um, Assembly. A man of stocks actually costs less. Like they, they say about seven million dollars of lost interest, where the Luther Olson is about oh nineteen million. But we just saw that we might have a three hundred sixty-five some odd million dollar surplus and or extra tax collection. So there could be traction on one of these two bills. What does that mean for us? One of the other things that I learned about at um, or I, I knew about this, but I learned more at a breakout session, was something no time to lose. And I will send you the PDF, the executive summary. Luther Olson, along with people from across the country uh, and state legislatures, looked at high-performing countries, Finland, Singapore, Poland, uh, Ontario, Canada, the, the, the province there, and what are they doing differently that make them successful? And what they did is they found these nine key things. One of them is like birth to six. Like they really take care of their birth to six year old kids. No matter what, they, healthcare, schooling, 3K, there's a really, in these really high performing countries, they do so many great things with their birth to six year olds. Another thing, uh, well many other things, but the one thing that intrigued me that, that has one of the biggest impacts is teacher preparation. The school, the, the, the places that do really well have highly trained teachers continually up to date on what it takes to be successful. They feel they're, they're, there's an investment where they feel that they are very important. There's this efficacy within them that I think was hit a little bit with that count. All right, so we have this no time to lose manifesto, if you will, which Luther Olson is pushing. And I think there's like Kentucky, um, New Hampshire. There's a couple states that are already starting to have these conversations and doing things. Wisconsin's probably the fourth one to the table. We started talking about it. So we have that going on, and he's very excited about that. I think there's some movement there to try to get better by what these other entities are doing. And then the other key thing is you can try to do these things, but there's no resources for it, right? Okay, and most of the time, like with the fund balance or with resources, you don't want to spend that on reoccurring costs because you can't plan for that. So just to set a seat out there, if we would get four equal payments of a or 12 equal payments of aid. Maria's running numbers where it looks like, what would our cash flow look like? Like how low would our fund balance get? What would that look like? And she's doing some and running some numbers, gonna run it through Bayer when we get it through. It's looking very promising that if that would happen, our fund balance may never get down below like $1.8 million. So that being said, then we look at, okay, what could we substantially do? And we look at the Bill Daggett thing and how, you know, you, you, how you can reform schools. I mean, there's things in Orlando, you bring people in, it costs money. But that could be an initial investment that we could invest into our professional staff to really start to move the needle. If we look at Lucy Calkins, there's amazing opportunities in New York of bringing people in to really help train that educator, give them efficacy, give them the training and the professional development that they would need to take to the next level. So there's that part where we, where the, if, if this passes and we look and we say, hey, you know what? We could be comfortable at X amount because this is what the cash flow is going to look like. So then that would free up this much money. What do we do with that? One thing would be this, I believe, investing in adults. That's a huge, huge part. And I think we're doing it with happiness. I think, I think we're doing it with literacy. I could see us doing it with these, how we could change schools with, the, with what's going on and looking at these high performing schools. And then another thing is self insurance. Um, looking at what our, we're, we're going to be able to find out more and more what our costs are, what our claims are, and that's going to be something where we'll look at, will it be feasible, and if it is, having some money that allows us to have a safeguard to get us through that first year would be very beneficial, but could have a huge upside. So my mindset, just to kind of throw it out there with kind of looking forward, if this passes where we have four equal payments or we have 12 equal payments, it will change things for a lot of different districts as far as cash flow goes. Still have to be conservative, make sure we have enough in the bank just in case things happen, but then really utilize those other funds to make an impact, a difference that not only would change things now, but setting that stage would change things for years to come. 
from a fiscal standpoint of self-insurance with health insurance to the other part where we would look at, you know, where we could fundamentally change systems. So just a FYI there. But I will send you that. Uh, no time to lose. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Looks at things that we can do and what they what people do do. There's different foundations set up trying to run those things, and it is different. I mean, there definitely is a huge impact that putting resources into zero through six matter. We don't do it. I mean, we do have different. We have chip. We have. You can hear it right now. There's a lot of programs being pushed around and talked about not being done. But when a kid comes in with everything being met or better, having as much as they can get met from emotional, physical, nutrition makes a big difference. And those that's what these countries and these provinces are finding. And the teacher, having teachers who have efficacy and know and are invested in and feel that education is a profession that's noble and they have the tools, it's huge. So I'm just saying that if kind of in the mind if these things happen, where could we get the best best leverage for not only now but for perpetuity if you will to set our district up for years to come. Just to FYI. That's all I have as far as other announcements. All right. Thank you. Item K, next on the agenda, new business. Number one, discuss and consider set open enrollment pupil limits for the 18-19 school year. All right. As you can see up on this graph right here, um, what we did is we projected forward. If you look at the 17-18 enrollment, you'll see that we have 87 at 4K. What we did is we just moved 87 to 5K, 93 to 1st. Okay, um, 99 to third. So what we did then is you look at our limits for each grade level of K through five is 100, seven, eight, and, or six, seven, and eight is 110, and high school is 115. So if we were maxed out, you would see that in 4K we don't have a limit per se. Um, but you, you'd see that, you know, we're, we're, we'd be rocking and rolling. So right now, special education is closed, but here's a, uh, the recommended limits for next year. Now this is all fluid, we could have people leave more could open up we could have people that would um, move into our district and close but the reality of it is is that we have that limit on the side that we stay true to now as you can see in 10th grade we have 117 they moved into our district there's nothing we can do about it you can't kick somebody out that's open enrolled so what I, what i would recommend is that when we look at our uh, 1819 available that's regular education and, and el that we have 5K is six, and then four, four, close, 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 three, close, six, seven, close, four. That's why I say we can't grow much more unless people move here. There's just, we just don't have the space. Um, and then still allow that anybody who would be a, 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 a kid of one of our staff could open a role here regardless of what programs they would need. And then finally, um, I'm going to be bringing in February um, Karen Bartell, Beth Dardis, Dr. Matthew Dow. They're working on a charter school for the exceptional learners. I'll get kind of a, an overview of it. The board needs to endorse that. And what would happen is it would be a grant for like $800,000 over five years. One year of planning and then four years of implementation would impact like 40 kids. And their target population would be kindergarten through fifth grade or sixth, fifth grade, it'd be these exceptional learnings. Remember how we talked about teaching to the, to the edges? So it could be kids that have hyperlexia or on the autistic spectrum that are brilliant, but yet being in that same environment. For instance, if you've got a kid who's working and they really love doing things with uh, Vectra box, and then you have to move on to English, the kid like that can't function, they want to go in there. So it would be more project-based things where if you're doing something with Vectra robotics, teachers then would curtail that instruction to have the English, the science, the math, all go through those projects. So it's like you could focus, move on, and we'll be looking at how we can really redo the way that we look at how we educate these exceptionally talented students at both ends of the cognitive spectrum. Now, and that's a partnership with Asian, and they have some, uh, uh, they have, they're looking at possibly wanting to also a 4K Right now we partner with Arts for Kids, um, and they do most of our 4K, if not all of it right now on Head Start. Looking at next year possibly having the Trafford Center have two sections of 4K here, along, and then still have Arts for Kids have 4K, and then also have uh, Head Start. The idea is a lot of kids from uh, Fond du Lac would want to come here, and they might have IEPs. So also within here is that 4K special education could be accepted here, 
but they wouldn't be necessarily eligible for spec for continuing education in the district unless we would have room. So if we do get that charter school, and then those students that are in 4K, those parents want to continue that and we have that charter school, we would have room for those students. If we didn't, the idea is, is that just because we allow a student in for 4K, there's no limits even if they're special education, they would be told that they would have to reapply for open enrollment 5K, 1, 2, and 3. Make sense? Would this be just here in North Island, or would we do it in a consortium with other districts? Just us right now. Us with Agnesian. It could very well open up to serve kids in Fond du Lac and all over, but from the charter school application process, it's pretty much a district, and there'd be a lot more moving parts to do. But you have, we got Karen Bartelt, we've got Beth Darts, we've got Tiffany Torres, Debbie's been helping out a little bit, Matt Dow, uh, is it, what's Miss Putty's first name? Meg? Hi. Meg Putty from the Trafford Center. They're really, really interested and they're helping in doing it. So we already have that that cohesive group that's working on it and they're running with it. And I said we just support and the district is supporting, I believe it's gonna be six to nine thousand dollars to have um, CISA help us write it. But then what if we would get it, we wouldn't owe the writers anything more, so we worked out that deal. Um, so there's different things that will come, but what I'll bring to you in February is a letter that I'll that I'll take information that I'll ask the board to endorse this application for this school. And then if they get the charter grant, great. They plan it for a year and then implement it, and then that would change some things as far as this goes too. But for next year, my recommendation is, is this is what we use. The most important line here is that line on the right, which is our total number, and then the current one, which is right in the middle. And what I've done, you'll see the numbers don't quite add up, like 87 to 100, 87 plus six is only 93. Well, we save seven because kindergarten, a lot of people move in or haven't been here coming more. So we're saving seven spots for kids that will move into our district. So, and if you'll see like 93 plus four, there's still set three openings for people who could move to our district. Well, back to the, the charter thing, is, would it be limited to just certain types of students or? It would be open for everybody legally, it has to, but it would be designed for those students. So it's kind of like Sears. I mean, it's designed for a specific type of student. Anybody's open to apply for it, but by how you design it, can hopefully get the right people into it. Okay. It has to be for a specific group, but you can't isolate others from not doing it. Right. But we would hope, that the idea is, is that people would want to go there if it wasn't the right fit. And what are we thinking is the right fit there, the student? Uh, students that um, learn through hyperlexia, which is uh, a reading, um, Program D, where it's everything is made visual. Even even things like sight words. Uh, Beth Darcy and Karen wrote the manual with Dr. Gerald Trevor that they're using at the Trevor Center to the research manual on, on this, and, and uh, we're involved now. What, is it five years? Yeah, and it year would be it would be just those. Not just those, but but what it'd be more of that project based type of thing. But also like that had said, hyperlexia, where you have brilliant kids that just learn different. Sure. Okay. So. But you could, but you could also have. I mean, you've probably met some people that are really smart but are socially inept. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and so you have you have some people who would need to learn. It would be a, a comprehensive um, school that would look at differentiated learning to the end. So you would also have some students that would be struggling that might then benefit also from working with students that are at the different end as far as their their ability. So. They're, they're writing this and they're getting the ideas together, but it will be a, to get the grant, you have to have an isolated population and they're still flushing through all those things, but that definitely is a big group. Is there a target date? To yes. Have it? it has to be, it has, the grant has to be um, submitted by early March, and then there'll be, there'll, it's a federal grant, Wisconsin got 93 million, I believe, and then, so they're vying for one of those, and then the next year would be a planning, and then implementation would be the year after. Then once they get, if they get it, then you have to look at facilities, you have to look at other things. So there's there's a lot that goes beyond, but just to start, you gotta get it first. So, and once you get it, things can evolve and change even then. So it's kind of like our PEP grant. We got our PEP grant, and then once we got it, we could do some adjustments and go forward. So, so look, for, look for that coming up. 
And the only reason I bring that part up because that could impact our open enrollment as far as special ed and stuff go if we do end up getting that grant. And then next year, if the Trafford Center does have 4K here, some of those students would want to come over, they already have some IEPs. That would not preclude them from coming over, which then could be a pipeline for our new charter school, too. And then the column available, special ed available, that, that really means that we're closed for any Correct. open enrollment across the board, not just certain category. Correct. Okay. We don't, some districts do categories. Like some districts, from what I understand, will accept just speech and language. I don't think that's legal. I don't think you can discriminate between speech and language or CD. It'd be kind of like we're only going to accept students that have A's and are easy to teach, not the ones that have D's and are hard to teach. That's, I, I, don't, I think if somebody would be pressed on that, I think it would be found illegal. People would disagree with me, um, and that's not my place to tell them what they should or shouldn't do. Where some people say, well, you can't just close a certain grade level, I believe state statute allows us to do that. We set the limits for what we believe is appropriate. I just don't, like for right now, we would like to say we don't have the resources for more, any more EL students, because I mean, we just were tapped, but that you can't say, hey, because you can't speak English, you can't come to our school. So I think there's some things. Or do we want to say that? Correct, because it's not right. So I think, so the way that we look, all special ed, which just, it is what it is, we're, we're tapped right now. Unless you move here, or you're a, a, a kid of a, a parent. That works here. Um, the other ones, they, they flux if we have kids move out, some open, we could get there. I, I, I anticipate that we're going to get all of them filled. And then when we build our new school, they might go up to 125. We'll, we're going to have to really navigate this to make sure that we do take mitigated risks because we do need the revenue. But then again, the revenue too, they're also talking about a new law where you can either pick your current enrollment to get aided on, a three-year average or a five-year average, depending on what's the best number. The only thing I see from there is it costs a lot more money because, I mean, there's only a pot here. So if we use our current average instead of a three-year average, all of the equalized aid is going to go down because everybody's going to do it to best meet what they need, which just means we're all going to get less. So bottom line is until we build more, we're pretty tapped. So I don't think we should really count on getting a lot more uh, open enrollment. The, the more people we get moved into our district, too, we, we end up doing better financially. So but we're doing good. And I think um, if we can invest as we're investing in our facilities, uh, but also our teaching staff, that's what makes, if we get this four equal or 12 equal payments, we have some resources now that have become available to significantly impact the quality of education that we have in our district and, I believe, significantly impact the cost of health care going on. Because, you know, you get self-funded and you, all, you always have a stop loss, so it's not like you are 100% at risk, but then a claim's a claim's a claim, and what you end up doing is, is mostly that secondary insurance is where your increases come because you just budget for whatever, but if you have too many big ones, that secondary insurance goes up more. So, but we could definitely sleep in the bed that we make, and it could be a huge upside to be able to transition to that. We could also look at moving into health savings account. If we do that, we have resources in order to entice staff members to say, come on over here, we'll match up to X amount of money and transitioning over to health savings account. Now all of a sudden, we drop the deductible, we just save half a million dollars in the deductible that we put in HRA, and now you have motivated staff that watch their money, and if they don't spend it, it's theirs to keep. So we can get really, really creative, and the hardest thing for moving from a, a low deductible to a high deductible, or from a normal to an HSA, is that transition period of getting that money set up. Even if you have, say we all go to an HSA, you're going to have people that use insurance all the time just because of the cards they've been dealt. But if they can get enough money in that HSA, they can then be fine, and then they can start putting it away the year before to make it for the year after. So there's just there's just so many amazing things just on those two fronts that we could do to fiscally on the insurance side, fiscally really set our district up for years to come on a good pace, and on the other side, significantly impact the efficacy of our teachers and their ability to impact kids, just from changing how we fund aid to our district. So. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions?
Uh, so you're looking for a uh, board action on approving this as a recommendation? Yep, set the open enrollment pupil limits for 1819. Right. So uh, any other questions or discussions from the board? Sports pleasure on making a recommendation. I make a motion that we <coughs> approve the uh, setting of the open enrollment limits as presented. I'll second that. Further questions or discussion? <coughs> All right, Chisholm. Uh, yes. Hawk. Yes. Streeter. Yes. Will. Yes. All right, question carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda, discuss <coughs> and consider the 1819 Horseman High School course description book. I included it. The change that Samantha brought up already in December. All right. Any questions or discussions on that? Uh, entertain a motion to approve that as presented. Uh, so moved. Okay, I'll second that. All right. And seconded. Other questions? Discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Streeter? Yes. Will? Yes. Chisholm? Yes. Hawk? Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda, discuss and consider resignation of Roger Julie as a volleyball coach. We need three good years. I uh, appreciate his service. He's resigning. Okay. I'll make the motion. Accept his resignation. Second. All right. Any other questions? Seeing right. none. Roll call vote. Will? Yes. Chisholm? Yes. Hawk? Yes. Streeter? Yes. All right. Adam Power, discuss and consider coaching and extra duty contracts for both varsity volleyball for forensics and for the spring play. All right, I'm gonna just for varsity volleyball in seventh grade, we're, we're offering it right now, but it hasn't been accepted per se yet. The person's coming in to talk to Mac, so I don't have anything official, but I believe that person would also become a middle school volleyball coach too. Which starts soon, right, or relatively soon? Yeah, a couple of weeks, yeah. Okay. So um, I feel very confident, but well, I haven't gotten okay from him, so that one I don't have anything there. Volleyball starts in a couple weeks? Middle school does. Oh. Into a spring. Okay. Early spring season and oh, yeah. track after. Yep. So that's the only one there. And then Krista and Jana, they do they took over forensics. We needed somebody. Jana used to work with Disney. Well, she was a, she did stuff down there. She's pretty and she was in forensics when she was growing up. Um, then Krista and then Catherine Gilliland, they have a spring play. We, we pay for the spring play if it's not part of the class, and this isn't part of the class. It's going to be Charlotte's Web. So those two, and, and Catherine has helped us out in the musical, too. Is it not a musical this year? And are they taking a break? Okay. The spring's always non musical, the fall's always musical. Well, the fall's always musical. Okay. Has that been announced yet? The fall? No, Anthony will do that. In, March or May. Like a big deal out of it, like last year. Yeah. Fun. I liked it. I'm thinking we've got two or three ladies, so they'll probably be looking for a woman's role. I think Fiddler on the Roof <coughs> had Ben Franklin written all over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, right. So, all right. So no volleyball, but then the other two. All right. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to um, uh, accept the. Uh, Front six and spring play um, extra duty contracts that are listed. So, second. Right. Uh, any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Hawk? Yes. Streeter? Yes. Will? Yes. Just? Yes. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, item L closed session. Do we need a closed session? We do not need a closed session. Gave you an update. They showed the house again or the Elmwood. We're just waiting. It's going to take that person. We're not allowing anybody to do anything in it either. Some people want to use it for soccer or whatever. And it wasn't this way until it sells. So. Um, so people within our school district who are interested in using the facility? No. People like youth soccer and they did. People look for buildings to do stuff. We're not going to get in that business now with liability, and we don't want to really keep it up all that much. So, and then we'll wait with goals and stuff like that. We get the four together, so we're good. All right then. So that uh, brings us to the end of the agenda. I will.
entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. All right. No second for adjournment. Chisholm. Yes. Todd. Yes. Streeter. Yes. All right. We are adjourned.